done this for several years now, and it's always a highlight of our uh, club uh, culture to just get a little conversation going about nutrition and how important it is to uh, consider how we, uh, how we eat and how we fuel our bodies. And here at Northeast, we love that uh, that phrase, fuel our body, yes. uh, because we have um, an active lifestyle and one where we, we drive to compete at a high level. Um, and during our nutritional session, we'd love to bring in some experts. And Liz Fazzaro has been our, our resident nutritionist here uh, for this conversation. And uh, once again, we're going to invite her uh, to kind of lead us in uh, several kind of conversations about how we can best fuel ourselves um, for competition, uh, before, during, and after, and just give us a little bit of feedback on on how we can have a healthy relationship with food and with nutrition, um, despite us being athletes. So I'm going to leave the, the floor to Liz, and uh, just a couple of a, a little bits of information. If you are interested in sharing, and I know Liz is going to invite us to share quite a bit, we do have our chat open, and I'll, I'll act as moderator uh, to make sure that we get as many voices represented here and any questions answered that we can. Um, so please make sure to utilize the chat feature. It should be located at the bottom. Uh, if you can't see it, you just hit more, and then there's a little chat button there, and you can open up a, a chat window. Um, we also ask that you have your mics muted unless you are actively speaking um, and that you are aware that this is a recorded uh, session. So if you aren't interested in being uh, shown, and I don't think you will be, uh, but if you aren't interested in being shown, just, uh, you can feel free to turn off your camera, um, but tune in as best you can. All right, and with that, we'll hand the floor over to Liz and um, her wisdom. Liz, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, John. Um, it is a pleasure to be here with everyone tonight. Um, I appreciate uh, the time I get to spend with you. And just like John said, um, the premise of this conversation is really to talk about how we can fuel our bodies to feel good, right? And to perform our best. That is um, my ultimate goal with you, um, with any of my clients really, um, is feeling our best, feeling energized, um, obviously, um, in particular with volleyball athletes and student athletes, um, is to hone in on making sure we eat well throughout the week, but then also leading up during and after um, the tournaments or matches, et cetera. Um, but before we get started, I did want to just share a little bit of background on myself because um, I was a student athlete. I played three sports in high school. I played volleyball, basketball, and, soft, and softball. Um, and then my junior and senior year, I, I only played volleyball and softball, so I spent the winter training for softball. And additionally, I was a dancer, and I danced four nights, three to four nights a week. Um, so I was so active and had I known just a tiny bit about nutrition at that point in my life, it would have made such a difference. I actually didn't even think about, um, necessarily what was best for my body and what was going to give me energy, um, and help me perform my best on the softball field. Um, so I really take this work and conversation seriously, but this is going to be an informal, an informal discussion. I want um, it to be interactive um, like it was last year for those who joined. I'll ask some questions, but I really want to, um, you know, provide guidance, but also answer questions and um, address any concerns that you have at the moment. Um, we, just like John said, we are going to go over what's best to eat um, to fuel your body, to feel your best um, during and after games. We're also going to talk about hydration, which is critical, um, what food does for your energy levels and your focus and your mood, believe it or not. Um, and that all goes into play, that all goes into play um, with how you perform and what your mindset might be during practice or workout, right? So all of that is connected. Um, so I guess before we start, uh, I, and I, I do, I do want to mention this, that tonight is for me 
I want you to be able to understand the foundations and basics of nutrition. There's so much out there. Um, there is a lot of information to read and find and, um, you know, nutrition isn't black and white, but it can certainly be dubbed down. So it's not overwhelming and that you at your age and stage of life can actually understand what it means to eat well. Um, so that is my main, main goal, um, tonight. So before though we get started, I would love to hear from those are who are willing to type, and I hope you all are, um, what are some of your biggest challenges right now? Is it your energy levels? Is it that you're not really sure what to eat? Um, you don't have time to, to make anything, so you're, you're reaching for, you know, takeout or fast food. Um, I, I'd love to understand what those are because I want to make sure that I can address them tonight. Okay, so finding some time to cook and eat quality food, okay. Okay, drinking water, which we're gonna talk about, black tea, getting enough sleep and eating breakfast. Yes, sleep is also very, very critical. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay, Ziv says how many calories to eat a day, which, once we go through our, uh, once I go through my my discussion with you, you'll realize calories are really not not the where we gauge what what's best to eat. So we'll address that. Um, I eat salads a lot at school. Okay, drinking water, chicken salad. Okay, so there's a bunch of different things. Uh, making good food choices since I have three meals a day at school with not as much choice. Okay. And I guess I would, would love to ask this question. Um, at school, do you have to purchase or do you have to get the meals at school? Or I'm assuming you can also pack meals, um, which is a really good way to be organized and to, to prepare what you, you eat. I'm assuming you can bring food into school, obviously. Okay. So time to cook breakfast and not just grabbing a bar. Okay. All right, thank you so much for that. I will definitely address all of this throughout. And then we, of course, um, I will answer any questions when we when we open up the floor for more questions. Um, okay, so what I wanted to start with is that a really good way to ensure that you are fueling your body the best that it can feel and with the best types of foods is to understand that eating three meals a day is key. And that doesn't mean you cannot snack, but sometimes like you guys just mentioned, you know, you don't have time for breakfast in the morning, so maybe you grab a bar, right? Or um, maybe, you know, maybe dinner is really late and you're just picking, picking on a snack. What's really important is to understand that the three meals, if it's, if good quality food is on your plate and you have those three meals, um, your blood sugar level will will remain. Your blood sugar level will remain level. Um, it won't dip and spike. Um, but that does not mean to say that does not mean that you shouldn't have a snack right after school and before before workout right because you you likely need that. But what I I don't what's not best for your body is having little snacks all day long. Having three really quality meals with a snack in the afternoon is a beautiful thing and will really help. Um, help your body remain energized and fueled for the day. Um, and so you're probably wondering, well, what should be in those meals, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down to three basic puzzle pieces. And if you could try your best, and I know it's not going to happen all the time, but try your best to have these three things at each meal it will really keep your, and I just mentioned this, but it'll keep your energy stable and it will give you the energy and your body what it needs to practice or do a lift or um, whatever it might be in the evening. And then that during the week will help your body be prepared for your weekend matches and tournament, etc. So the first piece of the puzzle is protein, okay? Protein is one of the most essential building blocks of nearly everything in our body. So essentially, it's vital for any function that goes on within our body. Um, we need protein to stay healthy. 
Um, we need healthy, we need protein to maintain our en energy levels. It keeps our blood sugar stable, like I mentioned. Um, and adequate protein is especially important for athletes as its primary, one of its primary functions is to build and repair muscle tissue. So, and we will touch upon this later on some ideas specifically on what you can have after your workouts. But please keep in mind after you have, you know, your evening workout, you should go home and make sure that you have protein and you're building your meal around a protein. Um, you know, believe it or not, when you exercise, such as lifting weights, or if you're running, for example, some of your muscle cells break down and protein from the food helps repair the damage, the damage from exercising and it builds up more muscle, making them stronger. So that is scientifically, you know, what it does for your body. Um, and additionally, it, it fuels your, your, your energy and carries oxygen throughout your body and blood. So there's like the science behind it. And I, I like to share that because then you understand the critical role that it plays in your day to day. Um, and so you're probably wondering, okay, what, what proteins should I have? There are two types of proteins, okay? There's an animal-based type and a plant-based type. And what I always encourage um, is the animal base. That's chicken and beef or pork, fish, egg, shrimp, any type of any type of fish, um, and you know we are carnivores, so we should be eating meat at each meal. However, I do understand that not everybody chooses to eat meat. So if you're not choosing to eat meat, um, you will get your protein source from plant-based sources such as beans and lentils, legumes, tofu, etc. Um, and a good way to understand how much protein you should have throughout the day is to take your body weight and divide it in half. And I don't say this to you so you measure your food or you're really honed in on the number, but it's a good kind of base to have um, to see where you're falling. Are you, are you only getting like, a, you know, a quarter of that in and where you can add some more in? So, for example, you can have a chicken breast, right, with lunch or for dinner, and that has 30 grams of protein in it alone. So that's a lot, and you may not think that that, that has that much, but a chicken breast, you know, let's, let's just say you're having a chicken breast for lunch and dinner, that's already 60 grams in your day. Um, an egg, for example, has 7 grams of protein. Um, that's just a gauge you know, I'd like to recommend having at least two to three eggs if you're eating eggs in the morning for breakfast. And don't forget, you can also have eggs for dinner if you wanted, like a scrambled egg um, with fruits or vegetables, with vegetables or fruit on the side, whatever you choose. Um, you might also be wondering, should I have the yolk? You know, some people think about that. Of course, eat the yolk, eat the whole egg. There are so many nutrients and healthy fats in the yolks and they're very important. So don't even think twice about that and go for the yolk. Um, and like I said, the protein helps repair our muscles and tissues. So it's really important that you remember that after you have each workout. The second piece of the puzzle is carbohydrates, which I love to talk about because a lot of times, you know, carbs get a bad rap, but we need carbs. We need carbs to survive. Um, they are quick burning fuel and it definitely should be one of the three things on our plates. Um, all carbohydrates are made up of sugar molecules, but the wrong type of sugar that we get is, is from, you know, processed foods and processed baked goods and all of that. Um, so we want to get our carbs from fruits and veggies and any whole grain, such as like a brown rice or quinoa. Um, if you've ever had that before, if you haven't, I encourage you. It's, it really doesn't have a flavor and it goes well with, with anything. But um, brown rice and quinoa and, and whole grains are, are good and okay to have as well. Um, and the carbs is what you want to have prior to your workout or practice because it's a quick burning fuel. And I'll go into more specifics 
um, in terms of you know ideas and recommendations um, as we continue on with this conversation. So that is what we need and why we need the carbs. And then we also need the third puzzle piece is the healthy fats. And I know fat, you know, the word fat, you might cringe at because a lot of people do before learning about them because they don't want to have fat because they don't want to be fat. And that's the farthest from the truth when it comes to healthy fats. Um, healthy fats allow our bodies to absorb the nutrition in what we are eating. Um, and that's really critical. And it they also um, seals all the food together in our meal, so to say, and it keeps us full and puts um, helps move the food through our digestive system slowly. So healthy fats play another important role in our diet and in our meals. And um, we can get those from, you know, nuts and nut butters, seeds, if you love avocado, um, guacamole counts as the healthy fat. Um, and so those are just some ideas that are really great um, and good suggestions for healthy fats. You might have heard this, the term trans fat or saturated fats. Um, those aren't, you know, what, what we're looking for here. These are the healthy fats. Um, that we get from the foods that I that I mentioned. Um, and additionally, butter is actually not dairy and it's often mistaken for dairy, but it's a healthy fat as well. So um, don't be afraid to use butter when you're cooking, not margarine, but butter, real butter, um, because that counts as you know some healthy fat on your plate as well. Um, I wanna also reiterate that each and every one of you have growing active bodies, right? So having these things at your meals is great and ideal, but indulging from time to time is also okay. Um, and we should, we have to live our life, but, and enjoy some treats, right? But we just don't wanna make it a habit every day, right? Or have, you know, a donut for breakfast every day. That's certainly not what we want, but we, we wanna, I want to remind you that you are so active and you are able to indulge, you know, I don't want you to be afraid to indulge for the wrong reasons or, or anything like that. And I always reiterate that, especially with this age group, because I also know that, um, you know, sometimes you might get nervous about, you know, having too many treats and I don't want that um, to be an issue here. Um, so before I continue, I figured I'd open it up to see if anyone has any questions about anything I just talked about, about the three meals a day and the basics. Um, okay, I have muffins. So Julia, I have muffins every morning. Is that okay? Can you flush that out for me and let me know like what kind of muffins, are they just from the bakery or what kind of muffins they are? That would be helpful. Um, what I am going to share that I am going to share a muffin recipe um, tonight, and I it, it's homemade and it has pumpkin in it and it has zucchini that you cannot even taste. I promise you, um, some chocolate chips. Those are are good for a snack, but a double chocolate muffin isn't ideal for breakfast, and that's because that isn't really giving you any of the food groups that we talked about, right? It's not giving you the protein that you need. It's not giving you the healthy carbohydrates that we talked about um, or a healthy fat. So what I would suggest is if you're having that, I, I wouldn't expect you to change overnight, right? So what I would suggest is if you like eggs, um, maybe cut the muffin in half and have some eggs with it and see how that goes. And then maybe next week, try and replace the muffin with um, eggs and fruit or something else. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect you to just, um, you know, overnight just switch that up. And I, I believe change is best when it's gradual. So why don't you give that a try and see how that goes? Because your body in the morning definitely needs um, something other than a, than a muffin. Um, cereal. 
So cereal, again, that is more of a processed food, right? And, and we're trying to stay away from the processed food. So um, I would say if you love eggs, make, up, make a scrambled egg. It's so easy. It's so fast, literally. And then have some fruit with it. Maybe grab a handful of nuts if you can um, and see how that goes. Cereal is made in a factory, right? There's nothing new, real nutrition to it. And so you're not really giving your body any of the fuel that it should have in the morning. So I would give that a try. Um, let's see, zucchini bread. Uh, is the zucchini bread homemade? Again, we're hitting on the zucchini part, right? Which is like the veggie, but we also need the protein. And that's really important because you will eat it and then you, you won't feel full and your energy will, will spike and then it will two hours later you'll be hungry again and you might be moody. Um, you might not be able to focus, right? So um, I really encourage, even if you like breakfast sausage and some bacon, that is fine too, right? That counts as the protein as well. Um, protein smoothie for breakfast. So yes, you can have that for breakfast. I wouldn't make it a habit every day um, just because uh, you know eating real food and chewing your food is really important. Um, but from time to time, yes. You just have to be careful with, um, I don't know what kind of protein, you know, protein you're putting in there. I would suggest a, um, a like pea protein if you can. Um, but you want to make sure if you're having a protein shake that it has some fruits or veggies. You, you can, can even throw in a handful of spinach and you will not taste it at all. Um, and some, and a healthy fat. So if you don't have that healthy fat, you're probably going to be hungry like an hour or two later. So making sure those three pieces are in your smoothie is, is ideal. Um, after I eat breakfast at 7 a.m., I don't eat again until I get home from school at 2. So that's a great question. Ideally, you'd like to go five to seven hours if you can. If you're not, so seven to eight, I have to count, seven to eight, eight to nine, I said 10 to 11, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12 to one to two. So that's seven hours. If you, if you are satisfied through that time and you eat your lunch at two, then that is absolutely fine. I'm curious, Lindsay, what you have for breakfast at 7 a.m because that also is important. If it's a balanced, you know, balanced breakfast and you're good um, and you eat it too, I would say that's fine. If you're hungry, I would listen to your body and, and eat something before. Um, yes, the, I don't know what the question was about orange juice. There is calcium in orange juice, yes. Um, what fat can you put in a smoothie? So great question. If you like nut butter, put a spoonful of almond butter or um, peanut butter in. Um, I love my, my uh, coach Carl actually turned me on to pineapple and nut butter. And I was always having other fruits in my smoothies, but I do frozen pineapple. Um, I'll do a, a pea protein and I'll do two handfuls of spinach and I'll do like two scoops of almond butter. And it's really yummy. So a healthy fat would be um, a nut butter or nuts, actually. The yogurt is, and we'll talk more about dairy. Dairy is tricky. Um, oftentimes people have a hard time digesting dairy and don't know it. Um, they feel bloated from it and they don't know it. Um, I, when I work with clients and I suggest um, pulling away from the dairy and um, the yogurt, excuse me, and replacing it with eggs or something else in the morning, they are amazed by how different they feel. Um, if you're going to have yogurt, I would make sure it's a Greek yogurt. I wouldn't make it a daily, a daily consumption um, just for breakfast. Uh, yogurt alone isn't enough. Again, um, Yogurt is often misconceived as the protein, but it really counts as a carb. So you're really not getting enough protein that you need in your meal if you just have a yogurt. A great question. Um, bigger breakfast than dinner. Bigger. Well, no, not necessarily, because if you have the right amount of food in terms of the three food groups that I discuss at each meal, um, you don't necessarily need to have a bigger breakfast than you do dinner. In fact, dinner 
is often a topic of conversation because I know oftentimes you get home late and you're probably wondering, can I have a meal at eight o'clock at night? If the meal is balanced and it has that good protein and some carbs and maybe some fat, if you can get it in there, then that's fine. You should definitely eat it at eight or 8.30. You never wanna skip a meal because you think it's too late. Um, is it okay to have chocolate chip pancakes once a week just to put a treat in my diet? Yes, go ahead. Um, so should all meals be the same size? Um, size, that's a good question. Um, if you're eating the right foods, I, quantity is like give or take. This is like a gray area for me. Um, if you have a chicken breast and you have, um, you know, I'm just saying a quarter cup of rice and you have, you know, a cup of broccoli and that's just a suggestion whether you have more or less rice and more or less broccoli it doesn't matter you know you're getting in the food groups that you need um so in terms of size and i don't know how you're measuring um but don't measure your food please um that is not the best way to go about it um if you just have these types of foods on your plate you'll be good to go apples and peanut butter for a snack yes is fine um and good you don't always, if you can have something with the fruit, you want to because the fruit alone is just, is it'll give your um, blood sugar level a spike and then it'll dip. But pairing it with um, the nuts is, a, is good and important and it will keep your blood sugar um, a little bit more stable. How do I start liking water? I know that sounds horrible, but I always try and convince myself that I am a water drinker, but I want something else. Okay, good question, which I'm going to table the rest of the comments because I want to go into water now. Um, so Sam, thank you for asking that. Um, I, I assume you're bored. Are you just bored with water? Um, so I suggest trying to put different fruits in your water. I know we talked about that before, but lemons, limes, you can, if you like cucumbers and mint, even put other fruits in there. Um, I would try and do that and see if that helps. Um, you know, seltzer water, if you like the bubbles, it's okay to have. Um, you know, some people just, you know, my husband, all he drinks is seltzer water and I'm just like, oh, I need like flat water for a minute. I don't know how all you, that's all you drink, but it's, again, it's a preference. So I would, um, Sam, play around with it. And I suggest for everyone on here, um, to carry around a water bottle throughout the day. I really don't want you limiting your water intake to breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, water is really important to help us stay focused during our school day, stay focused on and off the court. Um, it keeps our um, energy level up as well. And what I always suggest is to find a water bottle that you like or you love. And Sam, I know you know that too, a color that you like. Some people drink more out of a straw. Some people don't. Experiment. Um, you will be, be curious about that. Um, and I'm going to drink while I say that because I'm thirsty. And oftentimes people mistake hunger I'm sorry, people are, when they're dehydrated, they mistake in that for hunger. So I always like to tell uh, my clients and anyone I'm speaking with that if you're finding yourself to be hungry, like in the middle of the day, um, try for some water. If you just had a meal, you're probably thirsty. And for me, it's at the end of the night, like once my kids go to sleep, I, some nights I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so thirsty because my afternoon was like just taking care of them. So I forget, but I really highly implore you to get a water bottle, take it around with you, keep it with you all the time um, and, and see how that helps. Um, additionally, I have two more tips. One is when you wake up in the morning, Drink a, drink a glass of water. Why? Because when you are sleeping, you're not drinking anything. So you wake up, you're naturally dehydrated. And that in and of itself will give you some energy. And clients are always amazed why I tell, when I tell them, just don't do any, like even before your coffee, please have a glass of water and throw a lemon in there if you want. 
um, and see what that does for you because it just gets, it gets your body going and it gives you um, the hydration that you were missing all night long. Um, and I will talk about sports drinks. Um, I will talk about sports drinks. I'm just not going to go there just yet. Um, another way to, to, to tell if you are properly hydrated is the color of your urine. And um, it's when I tell people that they're like, oh my God, really? I'm like, yes. If your pee is like a darker yellow, you need more water. If it's like a pale yellow or it's clear, you're good. So if you're not really sure if you're properly hydrated or not, take a peek at your pee. And um, I know it's funny to talk about, but it's, it's our body. It's an obvious sign from our body. Um, so please take note of that. And if it is a darker yellow, just get your, get, get drinking. It is really, really important. Um, so we can talk about, um, the sports drinks, um, before you have a training or a practice or a match, it's important to have, um, some fluid before, um, that should be water. It also helps prepare your gut for accepting fluids throughout the game. So having the water before is just as critical as having the water during. Um, sports drinks are, yes, they're loaded with a lot of sugar. They're loaded with artificial colors. Um, if you, but they also, right, they replace the electrolytes in your body, right? So there's like, okay, everyone's drinking them. Why can't I drink them? If you're going to have one, I would suggest the, um, there's two brands that I would suggest because they don't have artificial sweeteners and colors in them. And that is Body Armor and Noom, N-U-U-M. Um, those are the two that I would suggest. Uh, it gets, it's a slippery slope. And, you know, I know, you know, that sugar is what's giving kind of additionally the spike for you. And I, I would hate to, to tell you go for it and then you're drinking it every day. But I switching it up every once in a while is okay. Um, and I, those are the two brands I would suggest you lean towards. Um, so that is my, um, oh, one important thing I didn't mention, and I'm sorry, but I'll mention it now. If It's the same thing as the protein. If you take half your body weight and divide it in half, that is the ideal fluid ounces you should have every day. If you weigh 100 pounds, having 50 fluid ounces of water is ideal. Is it a necessity? No. I don't want you to like lose sleep if you don't hit it, but it's really a good marker to understand if you're getting what you need for your body to properly function. Okay, so take your body weight, divide it in half, figure out how many fluid ounces are in your water bottle or the pull and spring bottles, and then do the math and then keep tabs on it. You know, you can even, if you're saying you're like, you forget, obviously you guys are students and athletes and you're busy of a lot on your plate, but even like put a note in your phone and, you know, keep track of it if that's helpful for you. You don't have to do that. Um, but any, any way to kind of keep you on track, um, I would support. Um, so I was next going to go into eating before, you know, before your matches and during tournament, during tournaments. Um, John, do you have anything else you want to add or, or bring up before I go into that? Absolutely. Thanks for asking, Liz. Uh, so Kat, Garrett, Sean, Frog, and I, as directors, we, we kind of met about this. Yeah. And uh, we came up with kind of three points that we really wanted to make sure that our athletes understand uh, about nutrition and how NEVBC kind of sees nutrition. Uh, the first thing that we wanted to make sure that uh, our athletes understand is that we live an athletic lifestyle, um, one that is filled with a lot of court time, yeah. uh, a lot of time in the weight room, and then whatever extracurricular activities you do, um, in addition to what we do in the gym, needs to be accounted for in the diet that you adopt. Um, so what we want you to think about is maybe you do need to eat a little bit more than what is traditionally served in your household because you do probably do more than those that are in your household. Um, so for instance, if your family uh, has, if, let's say your guardians or parents, uh, they have a, a, a desk job, they may not be needing the same types of fuel that you need. Um, so we're inviting you to think about that. 
so that you have ownership of the way that you are eating and you maybe take a little bit more responsibility in that process. Um, because so, it may be you may need more calories than the average person who just may be uh, not involved in athletics. So I want we really do want you to consider that. Um, and ways you can get involved in that is maybe you join your your parents guardians uh, on a trip to the the grocery store and you advocate for yourself uh, for what kind of items you do want in your diet um, and make sure that you're you're accounting for the amount of energy that you are expending. So that's one of our first point. You live an athletic lifestyle, make sure that that athletic lifestyle is reflected in the diet and that may deviate from what other family members in your same household may have. So that's a big point that we really want you to think about. Another point that we want you to think about um, are the goals related to why we want you thinking about nutrition. Um, obviously, nutrition is a, is a tricky thing uh, because it's closely aligned with appearances. Uh, but uh, our club wants your goals and your ideas around nutrition to be focused on the way that you feel, mm -hmm. the way that your energy level is exposing and, and kind of manifesting itself, and the way that you, you feel strong, all right? Uh, those are the three things that we really want you to really emphasize. The strength, the fitness level, I mean, energy level, and the way that you're feeling. is your, Do you feel powerful? Do you feel positive when you wake up? And if those are the things that are, are happening with uh, the way that you're eating, man, keep doing it. Uh, if you find yourself kind of creating goals more in line with the way that you look, uh, a number on a scale, or maybe a, a fashion style, we ask you to maybe adjust that because usually those three things, those latter, don't really align with high level volleyball um, and maybe goals that you've set out for yourself uh, within our club. So keep that in mind. We really do want you to be um, mindful about the way that you are setting goals for nutrition in your, in your lifestyle. Uh, and last day of competition, we need you guys consuming. Uh, we need you consuming. Um, and Coach Sean just mentioned it in, in um, uh, the chat here, the idea of kind of taking in um, food as, as best you can to fuel your body during competition is important. Um, and maybe you can't have the, the, the perfect grain or the perfect uh, meal at that moment, but you need something. So what we advocate is maybe a sacrifice to the highest quality uh, item that you could potentially purchase and, and own, and you just get something in your body because eating nothing is worse than eating something, like eating, not eating something is worse than having something that may not be the best at that moment. Uh, so we really do want you to make sure that you're considering that, that you have something to digest, something that's high in carbs during tournament play that will allow that energy to be quickly dispersed through your body so you don't have those crashes. I know there are athletes on this call that have faced the dreaded crash mm -hmm. on day three. I it's, nothing, it. yeah, it's nothing like going to eat a piece of pizza that's high in fat and then that all getting stuck in your gut while you're trying to play, you know? Yeah, we want, we want to avoid the high fat stuff and just get us some good carbs, pretzels, something. Something that's gonna get your body going quick. Um, so we just got to be mindful of that. So uh, Liz, I, I thank you again for inviting me to, to kind of share those three points. But as directors, we really want to make sure our athletes have those understandings leaving this call. Thank you. I, I love those three points and I echo all of them, um, especially the focus on how we feel. Um, do we feel strong? Do we feel energized? Um, and all of that, because really that is the food. We have control over what we give our bodies and the end result is exactly what you said, how we feel, not how we look. Um, and, you know, that's, I, I thank you again for sharing that. Um, and Gary, I saw your question. So how can we forecast the duration of effects that the food and water we intake will have? If I drink a lot of water today, will I be hydrated just today or will it help me tomorrow? If I eat a very healthy lunch and dinner the day before, is that any more or less important than the meals I eat on the day of competition? 
I believe, I think it's, it is important. I don't think it's more or less important. I think it's equally important because it's a ripple effect, right? So if I eat unhealthy the day before a tournament, I might be more unlikely to eat unhealthy the day of. Um, I it, And forming a lifestyle, right? Because I don't like the word diet because this is a lifestyle, right? As an athlete, you are you live an athletic lifestyle. So ensuring that you eat well the day before competition will only set you up to perform and feel better the day after. So I think it is just as critical. Um, I agree, great question. I think it's just as critical um, to eat well the day before and hydrate and the day of. Um, and after, because the recovery piece is very important as well, right? Uh, uh, you know, the recovery for our muscles and our tissues, we, ha we cannot forget what happens after, afterwards. Um, so to that end, I wanted to just, um, um, echo what John was saying about, um, eating before the match and um, eating before a tournament, you definitely want to eat something um, before you play. I would suggest two to four hours prior. Um, you know, you should have something that your body's familiar with. Excuse me, not something that you haven't had in a while. Um, you know, you want to avoid like an upset stomach, of course, but something that you know feels good for you, um, you're able to digest it, and you know that it gives you energy. Um, so some, you know, some ideas of just like you said, carbohydrate rich meals to have before, um, and depending on what time you play, right? I don't know what time your tournaments usually are, but like oatmeal with bananas, um, and maybe a handful of nuts, but oats and like a bowl of fruit or yogurt with a fruit salad, um, even a sandwich on whole grain bread with meat or chicken and nut butter, um, and fruit. Um, whole grain toast with avocado, um, or even chicken and rice, right, is, is, is okay. And depending on, um, how far in advance you eat or in what time you're playing, obviously will, will kind of change that a bit. Um, and just like John said, having snacks between matches is important and we want to make sure that they're carbs, um, for your energy level, right? Fresh fruit, nut bars, Lara bars, kind bars, you can make homemade granola bars, um, trail mix with dried fruit and seeds. You can have rice crackers with a nut butter, um, and homemade snacks that I will share two recipes that, um, I love and are great for that as well. Um, so those are definitely some ideas like in between. And then of course, um, recovery, which I mentioned, um, we want to make sure that the recovery piece is, is there as well. Um, we want the carbohydrate to replace our, our muscle glycogen, it's called. It's the glucose, um, some protein for the muscle repair, and then fluids, right, to replace any of the sweat um, that, we, that we lost, which we know is a lot. Um, I would have that within like 30 to 60 minutes afterwards. You can have a smaller snack and then have a meal afterwards, um, depending on where your tournament is and how far you have to drive. Um, but again, like a snack would be again, like a, maybe a whole grain sandwich or a yogurt, a Greek yogurt with some fruit. Um, and then a recovery meal at the at, at afterwards, it would be, you can do like a, a one pan chicken and chicken and um, vegetable one pan meal. Um, and I can share that recipe with you as well. You can do chicken and vegetables and rice. Um, you can do any meat with potatoes, um, sweet potatoes or white potatoes or whatever potatoes you like. Um, but I will say, and I, and I always emphasize this, and I'm really glad John brought it up, is that um, going food shopping with your parents are taking ownership is really a big piece of this because then you're organized, then you're prepared. Um, you, you know, when you go to these tournaments, um, I don't know if they, I'm sure they have concession stands. Um, I didn't play in tournament level in high school, but like the concessions and food that they provide is junk, right? So if you can, whatever you can pack and take with you is really 
is really important and more beneficial. Um, and like Sean said, like, I don't, you don't want to have a big slice of pizza sitting in your stomach, right? You want to have stuff that you take with you um, that's easy to make and, um, you know, that is going to fuel you for your next match. Um, and let me see, what else do we have here? So I wanted to go over a couple of recipes with you. Um, and the, there's two snack ideas, two recipes. One is, and I just have to pull it up. One is similar to the one I shared last year, but it's slightly different. Um, there are no bake blueberry almond energy snacks and they have oats, um, dried blueberries, um, honey, um, nut butter, um, sea salt, very simple and you don't have to bake them, right? So just before, you know, before your tournament, um, make them the day before or a couple days before when you have some downtime and keep them in the fridge and pack them with you. Um, you can also make um, pumpkin zucchini muffins. And I know that might sound like a weird combo, but you won't taste the zucchini that doesn't have any taste to it. But pumpkin is really good, a really good source of potassium and magnesium and zinc and iron, which your body needs um, as active athletes. And so that recipe has um, like, syrup, like maple syrup instead of the white sugar, it sweetens it, um, but that's a little bit healthier for you. Um, it has pumpkin, it has zucchini, um, chocolate chips, a bunch of other ingredients like whole grain flour if you want to use that instead of white. Um, but again, those are really tasty. They're easy to transport and take to a tournament um, and eat like a couple, one or two before even, or one or two after, you know, before your, before your um, meal. And then um, let's see, can you have a peanut butter and jelly for lunch before tournament? So yes, I would put that if you can, like on like a whole grain bread and have the nut butter and the jelly for lunch. I mean, that's light and it gives you something. Um, and let's see, can we see a picture of the snack so we can have those for later? I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, I do have the recipe cards that I'll send to John and he'll send them out to you. And there is a picture of what they look like on there. Um, and then a good, a great dinner that I love, um, and I'm not, you know, just for anybody, it doesn't just have to be for athletes, but it's, um, a one pan chicken and veggies, um, meal and you just put, chicken, you cut up chicken breasts, you put some broccoli and mushrooms or whatever peppers you might like or onion, whatever kind of veggies you like, um, some olive oil or avocado oil, some seasoning like paprika, oregano, garlic, and you just pretty much put it in the oven on 475 and, and, and bake it for, I would say, um, like 20 minutes. And then you have that whole meal right there. And of course you are, you can add brown rice, um, some quinoa or rice um, to that meal as well is fine. Um, and then you have that. So if you make that, you have it, maybe you have, maybe you have a lunch to bring to school the next day or two. Uh, maybe you have it ready for dinner after a late practice or a workout the next day. It's really kind of being organized and prepared. Um, and I know you're busy, um, but ask your parents for some help too, because I bet they would love to, make sure you're eating well and they might enjoy actually spending some time with you in the kitchen. I know my kids are little, but they're in the kitchen with me all the time and it's a fun time for us. Um, so, and I bet your parents would actually enjoy that a lot. And I know they're busy too, but we have to make time for this because it's, it's your body and you're fueling it and you want to feel good. Um, so, okay. Gotcha. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, is there any, uh, are there any other specific questions that I can answer at this time? Because I know we only have about five minutes left. Hey Liz, it's Garrett. Hey Garrett, how are you? I'm so good. I'm loving this talk. Um, 
I, I wanted to just throw in two, uh, two things. I think the first one is that a lot of times in the chat, I saw things like, uh, are we allowed to have this or that or, you know, stuff like that. And, and I think, you know, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but there, you guys are allowed to do whatever you want. And you yeah. can, that's the beauty of being a human being. You get to make choices and you can put literally anything in your body that you want to. Some people even eat like Tide Pods and stuff, which is a terrible idea, but you can literally do whatever you want. Just understand that what you put in will have a significant uh, effect on what you get out. And so your, your, your goal shouldn't be to walk away from this as far as like, well, here's what I'm allowed to do and not allowed to do. It should be about, if I do these things, I'll probably feel better and get more out of what I put in there. Does that sound right to you? Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I don't, you know, food should not be like a depri like your diet and what you eat, not a diet, but your, your lifestyle and what you're consuming. You shouldn't feel, um, I don't, you know, this isn't like a do this, don't do that. And it shouldn't be like a deprivation. What it, it, it is teaching you is what it does for your body. And for you to be aware exactly what you just said on how you feel afterwards. And what is your, what is your priority? Obviously to feel good and perform well. So put it, whatever you eat does have a direct um, correlation to that. So yes, you are allowed, like you said, to do what you want. You have the choice, but um, you know, be aware of how you're feeling afterwards because that is a true sign of, of um, you know, whether it's beneficial or not. Yeah, that's awesome. And then the other thing is just something that I actually I, I learned recently and seemed so um, like simple, and I had never thought of it this way, but. You know, a lot of this stuff that we talked about is like, how do I, how do I have more good food that maybe I made by myself and instead of, you know, getting caught without it or having to eat the school lunch, things like that. But um, just this really simple idea of like, if you're going to cook breakfast for yourself in the morning and you're going to eat three eggs, just make six. Instead, you already got it fired up and just keep the other three for later. And um, if you're going to make rice at night, make you know, more than you do right now for dinner. And it's, so it's not about finding more time to cook an additional meal. It's just, you can cook more at the same time that you're currently cooking. And that has been a game changer for me. I love that suggestion. And just at any stage of life, I, like I said, I'm a working busy mom and batch cooking. It's not batch cooking, but just doubling whatever you're cooking. Um, makes a huge difference. I mean, I do that because I, I bring lunch here to work. Um, so that enables me to have a lunch, right? I don't have to run out. I don't have to choose what I'm going to buy. Um, and you know that you're making it and you know that it's good, right? So, um, I definitely recommend giving that a try and a go. Um, it will really help in the long run. So I think, I don't know if we have any other questions. But I guess any other questions, I'm here. And if not, I am done. And I hope that you took some good points away from this tonight. And the emphasis, of course, is on how you feel and how you perform and not just feel physically, but what's your mindset, right? What are you feeling? Uh, are you feeling strong mentally, right? Are you feeling like you can focus throughout the day as well? Because that has a direct effect with the food and the sleep. And I'm sorry, we didn't talk about sleep, but sleep is critical. <laughs> um, you know, getting four or five hours of sleep at night is not, not good for us, right? You want like seven, to eight hours. Um, your body, um, you know, your body, when you're sleeping, um, your body does a lot of repairing and rejuvenating, obviously, but, um, you know, our hormones are affected too when we don't get enough sleep. Um, and so that plays a role on how our body functions and feels as well. You're very welcome. I will be sending the recipes to John and he will get those out to you guys tomorrow. And uh, I think that is it. You're very welcome.